Hello, in this video I want to talk about how to take pictures of rail cars so we can uh, look at those pictures and tell exactly what we're dealing with. Um, so this is whether it's, uh, it's uh, somebody wanting, to, um, wanting us to certify their existing rail car or if it's one of our subcontracted yards that, that is dismantling a rail car for us and we want, to, we want to see what the rail car looks like. This is a, a quick snapshot video of what kind of snapshots we want. Okay, so first of all, uh, it's important that we keep all the pictures in sequence. So uh, don't, don't um, you know, like, the, well, let, let's jump to the first picture. The first picture I, I want is of the rail car number right here, the TTDX912480. All rail cars have a rail car number like that. Uh, like over here, you can see this one's uh, RTTX165220. So we would want a, a close up um, picture of that. Okay, but the, 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 the way the way I do it, I, I come to the rail car number just like this, take a snapshot of it. Okay, um, nice and close. It should take up uh, a majority of the screen. That way it's very clear. Sometimes uh, the, 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 the markings aren't so legible. So I want a nice, clear, close up shot of that. Okay, so then we're gonna back up and everything, uh, everything after that reporting mark has to be in, in sequence, meaning once you take a picture of, of, of that rail car number, only take pictures of this particular rail car, okay? So once we go through all the pictures of this rail car, then take a picture of the next rail car number, and every picture after that has to be of that rail car. So uh, so don't, don't mix up, don't take a picture of this rail car, and then start taking pictures of, of multiple rail cars. It has to be this rail car, that rail car ID, this rail car, the next rail car ID, that rail car, you know, so forth and so on, okay? So it's important that, that we keep all our picture numberings in sequence so they make sense because we, we start collecting a lot of pictures and we want to keep them organized, okay? So the next picture is, is an isometric picture. So we want to look at it. Uh, we want to look at the side of the rail car kind of like this, okay? This is a perfect snapshot. So what I'm looking for here is is a side sail. I want to make sure the side sail is nice and straight, right? Or if it has any damage to it, you know, so that, that, that that's really important to know. I also want to know what the deck looks like. So in this particular case, it's steel. Here you can see that that I know that the, the deck is clean, everything is taken off. So if this is a dismantling yard, I want to make sure you guys dismantled uh, all the all the stands and all the you know whatever else was on the deck or or how much how rough the deck is. Okay, so. Uh, so this picture here, so this would be picture number two, okay? So the next thing I want to do is do the same thing, the same isometric view on the other side. So I'll walk around to the other side of the rail car. So once I get to this side of the rail car, I want to do the same thing. I want to take a picture, uh, not necessarily of the ID, because I've already taken the picture of the ID, and every, every picture after the ID, I know it's of this rail car, but I want an isometric view of this side of the rail car make sure that this side sail so this is a perfect view right here right uh, from right here I, I can see the the side sail nice and clear the whole the, the the whole rail car you notice that from from frame to frame the entire rail car is in here even from from the bottom to the top uh, the, the entire rail car is in this frame all right but I, I can see the side sail is in good shape I can see this side sail on the top is in good shape I can I can tell what kind of deck it is. Is this this is a steel deck? I can tell um, what kind of stuff is still on the deck. This deck is, is nice and clean, and I can also tell you know I, I can see the insill. What kind of insill damage is, is uh, we have on there? Okay, so this should be the third picture. First picture is the ID. Um, second picture is the ISO view. Third picture is this other ISO view. The next picture I want to see is of the, um, the the center. So you have to get right here. At the, the see how it has a belly down right over here. That's the center, so it's bellowing, bellying down. So I want to sit right, right over here. I'm maybe sitting. Um, I'm gonna have to dip my head underneath this rail car. But I want to see that right there. Okay. What's important here? I want to see what the longitudinal cross members are, the latitudinal, latitudinal cross members. Uh, I, I want to see what how that rail car is constructed. That's important for our engineering. Okay, so this this will be picture number um, What is that one two three so so number four? Okay, this is picture number four. I Also want to see this right here This is picture number five 
okay? Uh, I wanna see uh, that, that transition area from the, uh, where, where the center sill bellies down. If there's gonna be any damage, if this car's ever damaged, it's gonna be damaged right inside here. So that, that's an important picture to see. Okay, the next picture I wanna take is right here like this. And uh, what I'm looking for, what I wanna see in this frame primarily is a, is a latitudinal cross members and the center sill. So I'm standing right at the at the body bolster, there's the center plate, and I'm just I'm dipping my camera right over here, snapshot just like that. Take a picture of it. Um, what I'm really looking for is in this particular picture, you can see that there's a uh, bit of a dog leg right here to, to the center sill. So I'm looking for that dog leg. Because um, if this car has a dog leg, I want the matching car that or whenever I go to engineer it, I need to, I need to know what that if there's a dog leg in that or not. Okay, that's it. All right. So once I take a picture of that, okay, I'm gonna take go back around this car, and I want to take a picture of. I'm kind of standing right by the center sill. Okay, uh, I want to take a picture of the under frame. Okay, so take a picture just like this. I want to make sure that there's no damage on the side. And then that little area right over here where, where the center sill transition from the, uh, to, to the deep section, make sure that uh, it's not damaged, okay? All right. Then we're gonna to walk to this other side again. Right by the center plate. So same thing, I want, I want to, and this picture right here would suffice. Um, so in this frame, if I take a picture here, what I'm looking for is to see if there's any damage here, but also I can see real quickly uh, if there's any damage on the side over here. All right, um, it, it, but if this looks good, I'm not, I'm not gonna be so concerned about this, anything over here, but if there's any damage there, I'm probably gonna want more pictures of, of over here, see what other kind of damage that caused. If that looks good, this is a, this is a great picture here. Uh, lets me know that there's no damage, and then I also want to see picture over this way. Okay, I can see the dog leg in the center sail. I can see everything looks good. Uh, I can see it. Uh, so that, that that picture tells me a whole bunch of information. Okay, and that's it. Um, that's all I need to see, and that tells me um, uh, exactly what this rail car is, or the condition. So if you can give me those pictures, that'll be perfect. And that's gonna be the same thing whether it's this um, uh, this TTDX car here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing on that um, rail car over there. Actually, this car's sitting up in the air. So we'll start with this one here. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll go through it as if I was taking these pictures for, for the first time this car comes inbound. This is obviously a little easier because it's sitting up on, the, on these stands. And that's all there is to it. So one thing we want to avoid, so, so let's say um, I've just taken pictures of this rail car here, right? And now if I'm walking to this car, one thing I want to avoid doing is taking an ISO deck picture here, you know, uh, so the ideal picture is right here where the entire car is in frame, right? So the entire car is in frame. I don't want to start with this picture and then go to the reporting marks, right? Uh, so that, that would be backwards. So even uh, even if it's more convenient for me to, to take a picture of the ISO view deck and then the car number, 
I have to take the picture of the car number first. Okay, so th th that's like the uh, the benchmark. That's a starting point of all the pictures afterwards. Okay, so so let's say um, let's say that you know uh, I finished taking the pictures and I think, oh my gosh, you know what? I forgot to take a picture of of uh, of something on that nine one two four eight zero. So the way to to fix that, um, if you want to take more pictures. Let's say for some reason that there was some damage or something on this 912480. The car is in great shape. Let's just say that uh, I just noticed that maybe something's missing over here, and, and I want to I want to take a picture of it. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is come back to this car, get a nice close-up picture of the reporting marks, snap that picture, and then. I'll go back and say okay, uh, and, and take a picture of you know whatever damage, you know let's say that was damaged or something. So so I'll take a close up of that. Okay, or um, then let's say I just noticed oh my gosh I just noticed that that this corner is damaged right, um, and I already took pictures of that rail car. So now how do I do that? Well, first thing I need to do is walk over here, and take a snapshot of the car number snapshot of that. And then come back over here and take a picture of that, you know, of that damaged corner. Okay, this car is not damaged, but but if it was, so um, don't just take a picture of the damage or, or of a specific element. Uh, take a picture of the car number first, and then whatever small detail you want you want to take a picture of. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of annoying when. When uh, when we get pictures, and let's say it's just a it's just a you know close up picture of that center sill. Well, I have no idea what what rail car that belongs to unless you first take a picture of the ID and then take a picture of the close up element. Okay, so that's the way we need to do it: close up picture of the rail car ID and then uh, a picture of the element. But one thing that people often forget is. I need to see it in an ISO view, right? An ISO view with the entire picture, with the entire rail car in frame. So I want to be able to see from that side sill all the way over here. Okay, so that, that, that's also a very important picture. Here's another scenario. So let's say you have a rail car. You know, here we have two stacked up, but let's say you want to, we want you to take pictures of this of this top rail car that uh, that the, the reporting marks, the ID. It's kind of well, it's been cut off. We really can't read it for whatever reason. It, it's illegible. So a couple things you can do is uh, that that ID is usually written also somewhere here, like on, on the center sill. So take a take a close up of that. Okay. So th that's one option. Uh, the other option would be to um, take a picture of the other, other side of the rail car. All rail cars are going to have the reporting marks uh, on. If you're looking at the rail car. It's going to it's going to always be on the left hand side of the rail car. Uh, let me back up some more over here. So there is a, this is a 89 foot rail car. It's always on the left hand side. And this this is the same thing if it's a box car or a tank car, it really doesn't matter. It's always on the left hand side. So if I go to the other side of the rail car, it's still going to be on the left hand side. They're always on the left hand side. Well, not always. There there are some exceptions to that, but you can see here's this rail car. And the IDs are way over there on the left-hand side. Okay, so if we look at that rail car over there, let's go take a closer look. Well, here's this one here. Okay, here's this rail car here. The reporting marks on the left-hand side. This rail car here, the reporting marks on the left-hand side for this one, so this one over here, but they're, but they're not legible. So here you can find on this rail car, even though it's not legible over there, we can find the car number right here. So you take a snapshot picture of that. The rail car number is on the left hand side. Now this one is a little bit leg uh, illegible. So this particular case we would need to get kind of close. I can I can see what it is. I went to 95A but let's say it was even more illegible. Well if we just look up underneath here that's, that's more illegible. These are all the 90 foot rail cars. This is a 60 foot rail car. You can see the reporting marks on the left hand side. 
uh, there's, there's no reporting marks on the other side. So the reporting marks on the other side of the rail car would be, you know, over over here. It's kind of like the caddy corner of that. Same thing with this uh, car over here, the reporting marks on the left-hand side. And somewhere on the center sill, usually there's uh, reporting marks elsewhere. Not always, or sometimes they're illegible, but uh, look there. That, that may be another place for you to find that reporting mark.